This is Rhea. Welcome to Little Stories for Tiny People. Okay, so I do have a guest today, but it's a slightly different situation from my typical guest scenario. My guest, a raccoon named Jamila, is already asleep. I know, I know, this makes it kind of difficult for her to listen to the story and give me her feedback, but that's not what I'm after. Our story today is perfect for bedtime. So I wanted to test its sleep-deepening abilities. I've hooked up Jamila to a sleep monitoring machine. Yes, I just happen to have one of those. It sits on a shelf in my studio right next to my snowshoes and my 3D umbrella printer. Yeah, I can just go to my studio and print a new umbrella whenever I want. It's really cool. They're not super flexible. Oh, where were we? Right, Jamila, sleep monitoring. Let me put it this way. Jamila is currently at a two. That means she's asleep, but just very lightly. At the end of the story, my goal is to have her at a 10. To put it in lay people's terms, which I don't need, but you might is that magical intersection between deep sleep and happy dreams. Do you think I can do it? I hope so. I'm certainly going to try. Oh, she looks so peaceful. Although her tail is still flicking around a bit, so let's get started to keep her from waking up. Our story is called The Bedtime Socks. Take it away, Morgan. <laughs> Remember, there are no pictures. You have to imagine the pictures in your mind. You can imagine them however you want. Okay, here we go. Pablo was a raccoon. Some of his favorite hobbies were slinking, creeping around, and startling human people when they took late-night walks in the woods. It was really funny. Their eyes would get all big, and they'd say something like, Oh, look, there's a raccoon. Well, maybe you had to be there to get it. Anyway, more than anything, Pablo enjoyed rooting through those big, boxy bins human people dragged to the street each week. Pablo was supposed to be asleep during the day, but sometimes that big food-gobbling truck would wake him up as it lumbered down the block. It would park outside the house, and Pablo would watch as the truck would eat the food the human people had put in the bins. Pablo could see it from his den in the hollow of a big oak tree just near the houses. Pablo wondered why the people gave the trucks so much food instead of eating it themselves. He wondered if, maybe, the human people fed the trucks to keep them happy so that they wouldn't drive all over their lawns. He pondered this time and again, but never quite figured it out. No matter. The important thing was that when the bins were outside in the middle of the night, full of food, waiting for those trucks to come in the morning. Pablo and his family, accompanied by their pet mouse, Carolina, would sneak into them. Pablo would carefully remove his glasses and tuck them into his vest pocket and eat. Crunch, 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 crunch. That was how crunch, Pablo crunch, crunch, spent crunch, most crunch. of his waking hours. Remember, raccoons are nocturnal. They're most active under the light of the moon. This level of eating left Pablo quite tired by the end of the night. But along with being tired, Pablo was often excited. You see, magical things sometimes happened in the wee hours of the night. Things like... Finding a sandwich with pickles and mustard and only two human bites taken out of it. Or finding bottle caps, which Pablo often fashioned into earrings for his great-aunt Calliope. Or finding unused temporary tattoos, 
which Pablo liked to apply to the pads on his paws. Once, he found two heart tattoos, and he had paw hearts for two whole nights. It was marvelous. Pablo could not believe the kinds of treasures humans threw into those bins. All that's to say, in the waning hours of the night, when the moon still glowed brightly, but the sun was ready and waiting to yawn and stretch its rays, that is, when bedtime rolled around, Pablo found it difficult to calm down enough to sleep. Pablo loved so many things about going to bed. He loved how, when he looked out the window of his den, he saw the stars that had guided him all night slowly fading out of sight, like tiny flames being winked out. He loved the way the air felt both cool and on the edge of warm at the same time. He loved the way everything got very quiet in his den, in the hollow of the big oak tree, while life outside the tree was still not quite awake. Pablo loved all of these things. But a night when his tummy was still rumbling with the excitement of finding the coil of plastic from around the cap on a milk jug, perfect for raccoon-sized anklets, or from finding a pristine ear of corn, those were the nights when Pablo was most grateful for his bedtime socks. Pablo's bedtime socks had moons and stars on them, and when he pulled them on, he felt like his paws were snuggled up with the endless galaxy outside his window. With his bedtime socks, he could step onto a moving sidewalk on a one-way trip to dreamland. Pablo's bedtime socks made him feel like this. One night, one with a full moon, Pablo slipped into bed after having an exhilarating evening in the depths of the human people's bins that were to be fed to the big hungry truck in the morning, Pablo found a ball. Not just any ball. Not one of those balls you get all excited about and then you grab it and you realize it squishes. No, a bouncy ball. The kind that when you whip it at the ground, it ricochets upwards in a tremendous arc until it finds another hard surface, and it ricochets just as powerfully off of that, and over, and over again, until you catch it. Just as Pablo caught it in his paw, grinning wildly, and started the whole process over again. It was the greatest thing Pablo had ever found in his four-year life. Now, as Pablo put his head on his pillow, he gripped that ball in his fist. Then he reached over to the side of his bed where he kept his bedtime socks. He dipped his paw into his special bedtime sock drawer, and, and, nothing. Pablo swiped around with his paw. He sat up and peeked into the drawer. He felt a knot tighten in his tummy as his eyes searched over the empty space. His bedtime socks were gone. Pablo bounded out of bed. He woke up the whole family, including Carolina. They all searched high and low for the socks, and they all offered their theories on what must have happened. Maybe two smallish skunks found them and carried them away to use as sleeping bags. Maybe a raccoon who wasn't wearing his glasses took them by mistake. Maybe his name was Harold. Um, um, maybe someone took them, but for a good reason. And and maybe you'll get them back and everything will be fine if you're just patient about it. 
Maybe an alien spaceship came down and the aliens came out and they were teal colored and they found the socks and they said, these are ours now. We shall use them as antennae covers. And they put the socks on their antennae and they were so happy. And then they got back into their spaceship and made themselves a smoothie and then they flew away and now your bedtime socks are on Neptune. That last idea was from Pablo's little sister. She had a big imagination. While these were thought-provoking theories, they did not help Pablo find his bedtime socks. He decided to question the neighbors. Have you seen a pair of socks about this long, covered in moons and stars? Also, they give the wearer a feeling of deep contentment and love for sleep and life in general? I've seen some red socks... They were on my paws. Oh, I still have them on. Isn't that funny? I saw some socks like that about 20 years ago. I was just a young tortoise of 45 back then. I haven't seen any socks, but I did see a deer wearing roller skates. I didn't know they made roller skates for deer. Maybe he knows where your bedtime socks are. He can certainly get around real quick. While it was nice chatting with the neighbors and learning that deer could, in fact, get roller skates, it did not get Pablo any closer to finding his bedtime socks. It was also very late. The sun was up by then. The air was hot. The moon, well, it was barely visible in the day sky. Pablo began to hear signs that the day animals and people were waking up. Pablo was tired. He wanted so badly just to go to sleep. But he needed his bedtime socks, especially now that he was so wound up. Pablo stretched out in bed and stared at the ceiling. His mind started to drift as the knots in the wooden ceiling seemed to swim together before his eyes. Then, in a twinkling... A magical idea dropped into his mind, like a little fairy flying into the window of his brain. He heard a voice. Is that me? He thought. And the voice said, Imagine the socks. Imagine the socks. So Pablo imagined the socks. Pablo closed his eyes and took a deep breath letting all of the real clutter of the day leave his mind to make room for the make-believe stuff he put in its place. He bent down and imagined the edge of his sock. He pulled the sock up one foot, imagining the stars twinkling and the moon sparkling. He pulled the other sock and smiled as he actually felt the socks snug around his paws. Wow, he thought. I have a very powerful imagination. And he did, certainly. But as he turned over, his eyes fluttered open and settled on his pet mouse, Carolina, standing over him, looking guilty. Pablo shot up in bed. Ah! Ah! Then he noticed the socks. They were snug around his paws. It almost looked like the stars were twinkling in the moonlight. Um, it's it's not what it looks like, Carolina said. Well, out of curiosity, what does it look like? It looks like you took my bedtime socks without asking, and then you tried to return them without me noticing. Oh, that's what it looked like? Yeah, that's, that's about right. You put that together really well. Yes, I did. And just who do you think you... Pablo stopped when he noticed Carolina's brand new bedtime socks wrapped around her hind paws. Oh, what are those? Well, um, I've been having trouble sleeping, and you sleep so well, I thought maybe those bedtime socks were why, so, um, I, I took yours. But just so I could figure out what size I needed... Pablo suddenly had a very clear memory of something Carolina had said just hours earlier. 
um, um, maybe someone took them, but for a good reason, and, and maybe you'll get them back, and everything will be fine if you're just patient about it. Pablo sighed. <sighs> well, y- your socks look very cozy. Thanks, they are. Pablo reached down and smoothed the wrinkles out of his own socks. Well, don't do it again. I won't need to, because now I have my own bedtime socks. These ones, right here, that you said you liked. You know, in general, you should ask instead of just taking something. Then Pablo remembered how he had just gone to all of the neighbors about this. Also, I went to all the neighbors about this. I feel silly. Hmm, I I can see how you'd feel silly. It does make you look a little bit silly. Oh, I I mean... You're right. I am sorry. Carolina's apology did not rank among the best apologies ever given, or even close to that, or even much further away from that. But Pablo was exhausted. It's okay. Let's go to sleep. Yes, and now I can with my new bedtime socks. You know, I I recently discovered it works just to imagine them, too. You can thank me for that. Oh, also, I did wash your socks for you because, well, I kind of stepped in a muddy puddle while I was wearing them. But don't worry, I used gentle, fragrance-free, non-allergenic, non-toxic... Carolina? Yes? Good night. Jamila is at an 8.7. It's not a 10, but it's not bad. Let me just consult my scientific literature. Ah, yes. An 8.7 means Jamila is in deepish sleep. That's a technical term. And she is having dreams that are positive with only a few boring elements. Like, Maybe she's skateboarding on a rainbow, but now and then she has to stop and wait in line to buy floss or something. That's pretty good. I am so happy I could just... Oh, she just dropped to a 7.9. I better stop talking. Let's just let her sleep. Little Stories for Tiny People is written, performed, and produced by me, Rhea Pector. Special thanks to my in-house tech director, Peter Kay, for running my website and putting my stories on the internet for all of you to enjoy. Big thanks to Morgan for the super important reminder message at the beginning. And big thanks to Ben, Caleb, Luke, River, and Anais Lu for the wonderful sound effects used in this story. If you love Little Stories for Tiny People, please support the show by leaving a review and sharing the podcast with your friends. I mean, seriously, why would you keep it to yourself? That's just wrong. You can check out my website, littlestoriestinypeople.com, to find my picture book, t-shirts, stickers, and some other fun podcast merch. Thank you, as always, for listening in.